It's Thursday, September 12, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Paul's Legal Review, and our scripture is 1 Timothy, chapter 1. The purpose of my instruction is that all believers would be filled with love that comes from a pure heart, a clear conscience, and genuine faith. But some people have missed this whole point. They have turned away from these things and spend their time in meaningless discussions. They want to be known as teachers of the law of Moses, but they don't know what they're talking about, even though they speak so confidently. We know that the law is good when used correctly, for the law was not intended for people who do what is right. It is for people who are lawless and rebellious, who are ungodly and sinful, who consider nothing sacred and defile what is holy, who kill their father or mother or commit other murders. The law is for people who are sexually immoral or who practice homosexuality or are slave traders, liars, promise breakers, or who do anything else that contradicts the wholesome teaching that comes from the glorious good news entrusted to me by our blessed God. There's an old story about a young man who was challenged in his intellectual development. The good people of the small town in which the fellow lived had compassion and gave him a job polishing the cannon near the town square flagpole. Every day for six years, the young man showed up at 9 a.m. and polished the cannon until mid-afternoon. Finally, one day he was a no-show, and this continued for two weeks. The town manager saw him on the street the next week and asked him why he'd been missing work. The young man proudly answered, Well, I've gotten pretty good at polishing the cannon and I've saved half my salary the past couple of years. Last week, I bought my own cannon and now I'm in business for myself. Well, there's reality and there is delusion. The debate which pits traditional orthodox interpretation of God's purpose in sexuality against neo-interpretive permissiveness has been tried in the court of popular opinion and in the Supreme Court of the United States. But the supposed new day of LGBTQ++ acceptance and normalization in culture still flies in the face of common sense or theological correctness. When God has plainly said something is sinful, such as Paul's denunciation of liars, slave traders, murderers, and those who indulge in homosexuality, No matter how much you polish the canon of God's compassionate patience, you will never undo what he has declared as sin. And therein lies the rub, as in any sin, for God's forgiveness to be effectual, there must be wholehearted repentance. Absent of an outright admission of sin, a glutton remains in his cholesterol-infested guilt. Without confession, a liar remains a liar. And without ceasing the sin, at the very least steps taken to forsake the sin, a homosexual continuing his or her lifestyle of sexual aberration remains outside the realm of obedient contrition required to stand before God forgiven. No matter what sin we're discussing, the only sin never forgiven is the one never confessed. But in a massive, egotistical display of pride, the sin of homosexuality today is not confessed. Rather, it is baptized and brought into the church as neo-conventional. Granted, that's no different than ignoring other sins. It only points out that the church today has lost its way and stands in its greatest need of revival. For you today... The Apostle James reminds us that so-called faith, which doesn't result in a changed life, is spurious and merely a delusion. James chapter 2. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Just as the body is dead without breath, so also faith is dead without good works. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.